Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together the simple blocks for floating pinwheels. If you'd like to purchase this pattern, you can visit our website and you can purchase it that way. We have in front of us here on the Sewing Center some of the two and a half inch strips. You would have more in yours. You can see all the colors in this quilt, but the two and a half inch strips and one piece of background fabric and you've got your entire quilt ready to go. So we're going to be using the two and a half inch strips along with two and a half inch strips of the white background fabric and we're going to make strip sets. That's what we're going to use then to make our floating pinwheel block. So we'll take these off to the side so we have some room to work. And you're going to be using all those wonderful colors and it's fun to make your blocks is it comes to life with each of your cuts. So you're making strip sets here. Um, just remember that as you pair your two pieces together that you want to make sure you go in and press the seam allowances to one side. And usually when we're working with a light color fabric, we tend to press the seam allowances toward the print so we don't have that seam show through underneath. Then once you've created a variety of strip sets, I like to be able to do my cutting really efficiently. Here I have three different ones already prepared and I will stack them up one on top of the other so that I can cut really efficient. So we're going to slide that off to the side, get our ruler out. Now these are four and a half inch segments that we're going to be cutting off of our strip sets. And the first cut I'm going to make is a little bit wider because I have selvages and they aren't all even on one end so I'm going to go to about um, four and three quarters or so, making sure that I have enough to get a four and a half inch unit off of the strip. Now, your instructions have you um, working with an entire width of fabric. I just have short ones here because of space confinement, but we're, um, you would then work your way down your strip set, cutting four and a half inch increments. You're also going to want to make sure that you keep nice and straight so that you have a horizontal line that matches up with your seam allowance across one of your blocks there. And you can then quickly cut those four and a half inch segments. You're going to want to work your way down the strip set, cutting the rest. You're going to want to, off of each um, strip set, you're going to be able to yield, I believe it, the pattern has you cut um, getting eight pieces and as you cut you're going to want to then pick up your pieces in kind of an order so I want to get to four here so I can show you what I'm t um, trying to keep think of a way to help you keep organized. So now that you have four of them you want to pick them up with matching colors together because those are going to become one block then go down through the next and pick up four together. Once you have them brought together this way, then it's easy to sit down to the sewing machine and create each of the blocks. If you just sweep them all up and stack them together, then you gotta go find four that match. So this is one way to help you keep a little bit organized. Once you have those set aside, then it's time to come in and create that block. And you're just going to be orienting the block, the units, so that the orange is toward the, on this, or the print is toward the center of the block and it makes that floating pinwheel block for you. So then you are going to be joining these two pieces together, the top row and then the bottom row. And when it comes to pressing, you're going to want, it's going to naturally want to go um, toward the print because there's a seam allowance coming in here. So as you seam this, it's going to want to naturally go toward the print block. And since the same piecing here, you'll have opposing seams when you get to the center so that when you're finished, your block will look like this from the back side. Keeping things nice and neat so that your blocks will be easy to join later into rows. Once you look at your quilt though, you notice that this is a block where the floating pinwheels don't look like this but look like this. They're set on point, what we call that. So what we're going to be doing is arranging your uh, pinwheel blocks 
like this on point. And what we need to do then is fill in the outer edge because we don't want it to look like a stair step on the outside of our quilt. So what we need to do is cut the pieces that go on the exterior. And let me walk you through that quickly here. Go to your directions and it will tell you what size to cut your triangles or your squares to start. We're going to cut some large ones like this that are cut diagonally. I've marked this so um, you'll just cut from corner to corner. You'll have to use a longer ruler um, so that you can get that entire cut and then you will have triangles shaped like this. And then the second one that you're going to be cutting and these are really large. They're very, they're actually, the squares are similar in size but take this one out here. That was just an extra piece. Um, we are going to be cutting, you'll see here that this one I've marked both directions you're going to be cutting. So make sure that you are aware of which size block gets cut just diagonally once and which of the blocks gets cut diagonally both directions for your side settings. And those will yield pieces that look like this. Now usually when we're putting together a diagonal set um, quilt, the top or the outer corners are smaller. But in this quilt, you'll notice there are two blocks side by side. So that creates a large upper or outer corner block. It's a little bit different than we're used to seeing um, in diagonal sets. So what we have is blocks that are set together like this. Your next block goes in here and, and your various blocks then go out from that. Your triangles along the outside edge are the smaller ones just the opposite of how you normally would find in diagonal settings. And then you have these. So your first row is basically your large triangle. Your second row across here is join your squares together, your floating pinwheels. Then add your setting triangles like this so that this corner is aligned and seam here. Press your seam allowances probably in this case towards the white because they would be the easiest direction to press. And here, again, lining up this right angle and then pressing your seam allowances out. And then joining rows. For the rest of the diagram and how the rest is set, similar to this, follow um, the directions and diagrams in your pattern. For floating pinwheels, have a little fun. Thanks for joining me, and if you'd like to see more of our Quilting Quickly videos, you can join our, visit our website. Thanks for joining me.